appropriate in your opinion for an individual to buy stocks? Is there a, a level of expertise or interest, a, an amount of time you should have or capital, or it should be a, a side frivolity in, in, in a base portfolio of index funds, et cetera? That, that last sentence captures it best, and that is you should have a serious money account. I might even call it a boring money account where you put money in the stock market index fund and balance it out a little bit with some bonds, depending on age and so on. And don't look at it. Don't look at it for 50 years. Don't peak. But when you retire, open the envelope. Be sure a doctor is nearby to revive you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll go into a dead faint. You can't believe there's that much money in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's where we fool ourselves. So that's a serious money, boring money account. We have a gambling culture here in this country. Maybe every country does. You see it in its finest manifestation, or maybe I should say worst manifestation, in the lottery, state lottery. Uh, Las Vegas contributes its share. Uh, the racing. The races contribute their share, the track, and always just gambling, uh, where you know a whole lot of people bet their money, and a whole lot of people take their money out, and the croupier wins. The house three, wins. three to twenty percent of yeah, whatever, whatever it is. You put a dollar in, you're um, gonna lose. So uh, I'd say have a funny if if you, if you have the gambling instinct, and most people do, at least start off. I mean, I'd say start off with an index fund. Period and for five years don't do anything else. And then look around and see what's happened in the five years. See how it felt when the market dropped 50%. See how it felt when it came back. <coughs> and those five year periods are gonna be very different for one investor and another, but because uh, they're all you know, over time. But uh, then when you get there, 5% in the funny money account. What would have happened to Warren Buffett if he had done that? He would have, a tremendous <laughs> amount of value would not have been created by his, his, his understanding and ability to evaluate a business for investment? Well, name two. <laughs> <laughs> well, Longleaf, you mentioned Longleaf, Dodge well, and Cox. Well, they, they don't have the sensational returns. They may probably have something above par returns, but maybe a little bit below par from time to time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then don't forget in Warren's case, he wasn't running a mutual fund. Mm -hmm. The mutual fund is a badly structured business for investment management. We say, and this is the way it has to be really, you can take your money out whenever you want, and you got to be ready to put it in whenever you want. And so you ride on these waves of optimism and good performance, and the money comes in up here, and then reversion to the mean, which is a big part of my recent book, a big part of the final chapter of my recent book called Clash of the Cultures, and it's happened everywhere. It's happened in Magellan Fund. It's happened in T. Rowe Price Growth Fund. It's happened in our old IVEST Fund. It's happened in Fidelity Trend Fund. Ned, Ned Johnson happened to have run. It happened in CGM. All the hot funds, they were all in there for the last 25 years, and they all look like this. You lap, put them over each other, looks like the Himalaya Mountains. The reversion to the mean is a, a constant pattern. For the individual, um, I'm just gonna poke around here a little bit just to get your full philosophy. For the individual, it's unlikely that you're gonna hit the mountaintop of the Himalayas with your portfolio. So you may not have to ever see the other side of the mountaintop unless you have so successfully invested that your personal account is yeah, well, moving up in, a, in is, a billion let's, dollar Let's say you asset. bought Magellan before, you, before it was for sale, which is where that record begins, by the way. There's a lot of phoniness in this business. Uh, and uh, you, But you're, you're gonna enjoy the mountain. Mm -hmm. And you're not gonna know it's a mountain. Mm -hmm. But when that mountain gets up there, you think, my God, this I found the holy grail. And now I'm really gonna go all in. And now I'm gonna go all out. So there's a lot of behavioral kind of stuff, not mm -hmm. to use too fancy a word, in the mutual fund industry. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, Tom, there is no behavioralism in the field of stocks generally. How could that be? That is because I'm a dumb behavior. The guy that buys my stock from me is a smart behavior. We offset each other. I mean, it's not as if I, I, it's not as if I can make a behavioral mistake uh, without somebody else making a a, a, a successful behavior thing, the other side of the trade. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think we take a lot for granted. We listen to all these theories, and big, old, boring indexing is the answer. Have you ever bought individual stocks and or actively traded funds? And if so, what do you look for in those investments? Well, I, when I came into the business, I had friends in the brokerage business, I bought this and that and the other thing. And then I had a broker. And he would tell me this was good, get out of that and get into that. 
And it wasn't that they did badly, which was, of course, what they did, but it was, I just couldn't stand to have my phone ring when I was trying to do my work. So I haven't owned an individual stock since, let me say, 1960. I don't know exactly how long.